Michaela Medford. Hi, I'm Lauren Medford and we are making turkey meatballs today. This video is sponsored by Alliance for Positive Health, Food for Life. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is go over the list of ingredients that we need. We are using this recipe, baked turkey meatballs, which may have been in your pantry bag last week. So the first ingredient on the list is a third cup of grated Parmesan cheese. So you can get fresh Parmesan cheese and grate it yourself, but if you don't have the tools to do that, buying it pre-shredded is totally fine. The next ingredient is a third cup of Italian seasoned breadcrumbs. I just got the Hanford brand that works just as well. The next ingredient is three tablespoons of finely chopped fresh herbs. I went with Italian style uh, fresh parsley, so I chopped those up already. The next ingredient is a half teaspoon of garlic powder. The next ingredient is a half teaspoon of onion powder. And then a half teaspoon of dried oregano. Right here. And then we have a quarter teaspoon of black pepper and a teaspoon of salt. So we have our salt and pepper right here. Um, half a teaspoon is about this size. Just FYI, this is what I used to measure. Um, the next ingredient we have is a large egg, which I've cracked and put in this ramkin. And one and a half tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. This is the kind that we used and I have pre-poured the amount into here. And then of course, a pound of lean ground turkey meat. Yummy. <laughs> Yummy. So the first step is to preheat your oven to 375, which I did. Um, and then we are going to line a ring baking sheet with aluminum foil and coat with nonstick spray. So I have lined our baking sheet with aluminum foil, but I'm going to have my assistant, Caleb, here spray it with some nonstick cooking spray. Shake it up for him. There you go. Not too close to the pan. You want it a little bit far so it doesn't get too concentrated in one area. There you go. Perfect. All right. I'm going to set that to the side. The next step, it says in a large mixing bowl, we're going to add the cheese. Dump that in there breadcrumbs, our fresh herbs, nice, the onion powder, the garlic powder, yep, the oregano, and the salt and pepper. And now we're gonna wanna stir all of these spices together so they combine really well. Put the cheese in there, like that. And we're just using a fork to, to stir these. We have a stir. We do, but you could also use a fork. It's just as, just as well. Perfect, Caleb. Thank you. So next it says to add the turkey, which I'm going to do so Caleb doesn't have to touch the, the raw meat. Um, very important when you're handling raw meat is to wash your hands immediately after. Don't touch anything after touching the raw meat until you wash your hands because it's very easy to get a foodborne illness that way because a lot of bacteria likes to hang out on raw meat, which is why we have to cook it and which is why we can't eat it uncooked, right? So I'm just going to dump that in there. Now the next step is with that egg, I'm going to have Caleb beat it with a fork. 
So when you beat the egg, you're essentially like, it's like you're making scrambled eggs. You're breaking the yolk. You're not actually beating it. Yeah, you're not actually beating it. We're not actually abusing our egg, right, Caleb? Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to dump that in there. Hold on a minute. Thank you. Great. So next, we got to mix it together. Now, the best way is to mix with your hands. Um, but because I don't like to touch raw meat, we're going to use a fork to mix it all together really well. Okay. Here. Oh, yeah. This part can be a little bit tricky. My little hands. So when you're mixing, you just want to make sure that everything is mixed together really well with the meat. The egg is well incorporated. All your seasonings are well dispersed or spread out through the meat. All right. What does it say to do next, Caleb? We're on step three. With a scoop of scoop or spoon, scoop the meat and shape it into one and a half inches meatballs. So this recipe says that it makes 20 meatballs. So one and a half inches is probably a really good size. Another reason you don't want to make your meatballs too big is that they probably won't cook all the way through. Um, and they'll end up getting burned on the outside and undercooked on the inside. So I will show you about what one and a half inches looks like in a second. So now that that's mixed together, do you want to get a spoon, Kayla? These out of the way. Baking sheet. I got a big spoon. Perfect. So I'm going to show Caleb here roughly the right size. We're going to scoop it about a spoonful. And you can kind of shape it with your spoon. Again, perfectly fine to use your hands, um, just as long as you're washing your hands immediately afterwards and you're not touching um, anything, else. anything else. So I don't know if you can tell, but this is about the size that you want. So I'm going to have Caleb work on filling this baking sheet and then we're going to pop them in the oven. The next, the final step is to brush all the olive oils, um, yep. the olive oil on the, all of the meatballs and then you put it in the oven. Great. Now these are ready to go in the oven at 375 for about 15 to 20 minutes or until the internal temperature reads 165. Stay tuned. So while we're waiting for these meatballs to cook, Caleb, I have a joke for you. What is it? Where did the spaghetti go to dance? Where? The meatball. <laughs> Welcome back. The meatballs are done. All right, so the meatballs actually took a lot longer than 15 minutes, probably because I made the meatballs a little bit larger. Um, so in total, it took ours about 35 minutes to cook all the way through. I just want to show you. 34. When you're checking the internal temperature of your meatball, make sure that you're sticking the thermometer into the center of the meat so you're getting the right read. Um, you don't want to stick it on the surface because the surface of the meatball might be cooked through, but you really want to make sure that it's cooked all the way through to the center, right? Yeah. So the only thing left to do is to taste test. Taste test. So I'm going to give one to Caleb and we're going to cut it in half.
Yeah, it's still a little hot. Good. It's still hot. <laughs> it's good. So meatballs aren't just for spaghetti. You can put this on a sandwich and make meatball sub, or you can serve it with brown rice. Um, but yeah, so thank you for watching. Um, I hope you are able to recreate this recipe at home. It's super easy and super delicious. And thank you to my assistant, Caitlin. <laughs>